what's going on and welcome back today we're going to talk about binary exploitation and specifically we're going to take a look at format string vulnerabilities so before starting with what is format string vulnerabilities let's first understand what is format string and what are format specifiers so often we see in seco programs if we if you inspect the code you will see often the format specifiers such as percent s percent could be p percent x you will often see these right so what are these these are format specifiers and it indicate the type of input that is taken from the user we see this often with the print if function so when the program is printing an input from the user we often see these this is an example here we're going to talk about this so what are these these are format specifiers to indicate the type of input taken from the user and they are necessary actually to perform initial checks on the input and to prevent unexpected input from the user for example uh, uh, percentage s is for strings percentage p is for addresses or address pointers percentage x is for hexadecimal so when i type print f uh, s and uh, percentage s and then user input here i am telling the program to wait an input from the user whose type is string so we need strings from the user if the user tried to input hexadecimal it's not gonna work now format string vulnerabilities are the kind of vulnerabilities that you would spot in the absence of the format specifiers let's take an example take a look at this code here so this code defines one variable as you can see and the argument here is taken from the user as an input and then is directly printed so no matter the what, what no matter the user input was it would print anything you would provide and that's uh, an example a simple example of format string vulnerabilities there is no specification on the on the type of input taken from the user so, so this is vulnerable now let's take a look at this one as you can see the same code but when we use the printf function we tell the program what kind of input we are waiting from the user so the input here we have one argument for the input it is of string type so we are waiting or we're only allowing strings from the user if the user attempts to print something other than strings uh, to send something other than strings the program will complain and that is the secure way so now we gave a simple uh, explanation of the concept let's now take a practical scenario the practical scenario will be from pico ctf uh, let's jump now and see how we can tackle this down so the challenge name is stonks and as per the description i decided to try something none else has before i made a bot to automatically trade stonks for me using ai and artificial intelligence and machine learning i wouldn't believe if you told me it is insecure well we will make this guy believe so the way to connect the program is to use nc mercury pico ctf on port 59 616 and to inspect the program code you will have to download this so basically we launched the web shell we have and i make i created a directory called stonks for the challenge and inside the directory i downloaded the vulnerable c program i used wget and i copied the url of this one pasted here to perform the download so once we downloaded the file let's take a look now at the vulnerable code and challenge the this guy here who's telling us that the program he wouldn't believe that the program uh, is insecure so nano vulnerable c and let's take a look at the program so let's see here so here the first function view portfolio responsible for printing the user portfolio um let's see here so printing the portfolio here it's taking the again checking on the input 
and according to the input you type it prints the portfolio of the current user okay there's also another function pick simple with ai but these are fine there is a function here called buy stonks and as you can see it defines api buffer inside the api buffer it's supposed to be the flag buffer or the flag size and then we read the flag from a file and if the, if the flag doesn't exist it will print the flag doesn't exist if the flag exists it will store its uh it will store the flag inside api buff so as you can see the flag now is stored inside the api buff and it is inside the stack that's fine let's scroll down see what else we have print stonks chosen so here we define another one and we allocate space in the memory using the malloc and we ask the user what is your api token after that we wait the input from the user user buff scan if and we expect here as you can see string and then we say buying stonks with the token so once the user send a token uh, the program says yeah i'm gonna buy tokens with the buy stonks with the token and then print f user buff so here it prints what do you think it prints the api key the user has uh, already sent in this step as you can see in the print if function there is no specification on the kind of um, string right so there should be the format specifier in here so in our case it could be percentage s to indicate that the program is printing string input but since there is no specification we can safely say that there is format string vulnerability and the way to take advantage of that is to just print data of the stack so once we see printf user buff we know that the user buff here or the api key is actually in the stack because we use the printf function it means we are printing data of the stack since there is no specification on the format uh, string we can actually uh, we can we can say to that we can try the uh, format string vulnerability exploitation so let's connect with the program and see how this all works so what would we like to do view my portfolio buy some stonks the second option won't work because it works only on those who has API keys. Now we don't have API keys. Uh, we will get a stick with the first option, buy some stonks. So one, and then using patented AI algorithms to buy stonks, stonks chosen, what is your API token? Yeah, we don't have API token. That's why we are uh, exploiting the program. So now, since we know there is no format, uh, format specification on the uh, user buff or the API token, we can try some tricks. Before doing that, let's provide something like one. And as you can see, it returned one and other details. So that won't be helpful. What we're going to do here, we're going we're gonna to need to read data of the stack. We're going to see what are, the, uh, what, what are the data that present in the stack. So basically, we're going to go back and select the first one. In order to exploit format string vulnerabilities, we're going to provide our input as a format string itself. So if you say P for addresses, if the output was an address pointer, it means that the program is vulnerable. As you can see, we received here a pointer, which means that the program is actually vulnerable. It's printing whatever we provided. So if we provided a format string with uh, for for addresses it would print addresses so what we're gonna do here we're gonna print out the data of the stack the api key the flag everything um, using the hexadecimal format and then we're gonna convert the hex into strings so going back one let's say with x what's gonna happen as you can see, I received a hexadecimal string. All right, that's fine. So to print more data, we're gonna have, let's try more than one. As you can see, I received now two hexes. So go, go back and we provide 
multiple x's x x x let's copy that and paste paste as much as we can until we print most of the data in the stack from which we will extract the flag and the api key see what we're let's see what we're going to be able to, uh, to extract and yeah so as you can see we received a lot of XSML data so we're going to take this and convert that into the ascii format convert uh, go back so this is the hex convert to ascii and let's see here so we still need x's i guess convert and yeah take a look at this pattern so this is the flag pattern right and it is stored in the st stack as we expected now but if you if you look closer you see the uh, strings are kind of inverted o c i p if you read it backward or in the reverse p co right c t f so this means that we, this is big endian we're going to need to do some data conversion or endian swap so we're going to take the flag here in its current format convert that into hex so we're going to say here reset and swap put the text sk format and convert so this is the corresponding hex so what do we do with that we're going to now perform endianess swap so remove these ignore these put the input and search for swap indianus so now you have swapped from big indian to little indian the next step is to convert this into ascii format back so from hex again and as you can see this is the flag of course we're going to ignore this and we will remove yeah take this going to the flag area we remove that remove the dot and submit as you can see you sold the challenge correctly again so that was today's challenge i hope you learned something about binary exploitation and see you in the next video